Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Witzel at Winthrop University, and I was a member of the panel for the IES practice guide on RTI and mathematics. Explicit instruction can't be ignored for, for the general population. A lot of people may believe that explicit instruction alone, that's for those other students, those are for the struggling students, and you hear that quite frequently in classrooms. But that's not necessarily true. In fact, explicit instruction is needed at the tier one level. So almost all students will need some type of explicit instruction, particularly when a math concept is either new or difficult. So keeping that new or difficult problem in mind, as we expand in tiers and we get students who are struggling, and now we have an additional work with them at tier two, well, again, we know that this is something that is difficult. We must have more explicit instruction within it. So as far as explicit instruction goes with that, we have to build up the intensity. Intensity might be more time spent on explicit instruction, might be more time for modeling, might be more time for student think alouds to go with the teacher think alouds, maybe more time for that guided practice, and certainly more time for the practice as well. But as far as building up that intensity, we have to also, as additionally in with this, is give students more time to think about processes. So as we increase in tiers of where students are struggling, we need to increase the amount of explicit instruction, or certainly keep in mind that explicit instruction needs to be handled particularly for the most difficult concepts we teach. Guided and scaffolded practice is something that, again, appears real easy, but it's quite complex. Scaffolding itself is a complex series of give and take between a teacher and a student to make sure that we are preparing them to be independent at that final step we want them to be. There are two ways to look at this. There's a within lesson way of looking at this and a between lesson way of looking at this. A, a within lesson guided practice or scaffolding, that within lesson means that during the lesson I am preparing students to be independent. When the I do it, the modeling is pretty much clear. But to get to that guided practice, I need to let, first I am introducing it a little bit ahead of the students, then I want the students to be one step ahead of me, then I want them to be two steps, three steps, four steps, until they are independent on their way. So that's kind of that within. So if I'm teaching addition of fractions with like denominators, I'll probably go through some of the different steps where addition works out, how denominators work, and then I can keep building it in step by step through it. Guided practice can also happen between lessons. For example, if I'm teaching functions or solving simple equations, it's often in a textbook that it will show at the end 1x equals 5. And so we just conclude the lesson, okay, we're done. The problem is in about two or three lessons down the road, I have 2x equals 5, 1 half x equals 5. And that coefficient, if it's ignored up front, we're actually not preparing students for what we want them to learn in a couple days. So if I really want students to be successful and I want to guide them to be successful later on, I need to teach a correct sequence of instruction first whether those steps you think that they're not relevant or not for the particular problem, if they are the most efficient way to teach this, we've got to do it up front. Practice can be done in a lot of different ways. Most teachers may think of practice as involving homework. And I'm sure that comes frequent to mind in most teachers. Well, I give them enough homework. But it's actually what they're doing for homework that determines whether that's practice or not practice. Sometimes we say, well, listen, I'm sorry, check the watch. I don't have enough time to complete this activity today. Could you finish the rest for homework? That's not independent practice. In fact, that may be even at the teacher think aloud stages where they, they're trying to figure out a process to it. Now we're asking mom and dad to play that role for us. So that's not practice. Practice actually can be different. Practice means that they are independent at that level and now we need to maintain the independence and build in a process. So if homework, we're gonna send home homework as independent practice, students gonna have to be clearly independent at that level. The feedback that we have to give students who are struggling may be different from what we do with other subjects. First, math is hard. Math can be very complex. So to give some feedback to the students, make it pinpointed to directly that error pattern or that success pattern that they're having and reteach based on it. And if they aren't doing well, encourage that effort that they are doing this. Hey, listen, you are working hard. This is important and you're gonna get it. Teach perseverance. Maybe we can praise the process. Maybe we can praise students' work ethic. If we can get those work ethics and work efforts up, I think we're gonna have better results.